And just have a look at the way that I'm approaching it, just so you know you're headed on the right track. Okay. So I've taken one group's numbers, and this is the numbers that they, the measurements they gave me. And so not knowing anything about like the weird curvy bits and other things on the diagram, sorry, on the field that you guys saw there, if all I had was these numbers, then this is what I created. Okay. Now, by the way, can I just say, yeah, that's roughly what I expected. Remember, I said like scale, not to scale. I've done my best by just roughly estimating. It's not perfect, but yeah, this kind of is the shape I was expecting. Okay? Now I've got two questions to ask. Perimeter and area. That's all. Okay? So let's tackle them one at a time. I've got a whole bunch of lengths here, right? It might be helpful if I gave these things names. So when you have um, a polygon like this, we tend to give all of the corners, vertices, capital letters as names. So if I call these A, B, C, and D. If I want a perimeter, then I'm going to need to look at each of these lengths individually. But thankfully, and this is the reason why the traverse center is the way it is, every one of those lengths, A, B, B, C, C, D, etc., they're all in right angle triangles. They're all the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. In fact. So for instance, if I wanted to work out A, B, I would say, a, B squared is, what does Pythagoras tell me in that top right triangle? Very good. Right? So out of that, I'm going to add up whatever these large numbers are. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and that's going to give me a number. In fact, I'm going to, someone's going to beat me to actually calculating what this number is. Someone already got this? Yeah. <laughs> the big number or the square root? Well, give me the square root. <laughs> Wait, have you taken the square root? Oh yeah, like that? Can you take the square root of that? Oh, sorry. Uh, give me one. 87.0. Approximate. Okay, now just have a look. Is that kind of in the ballpark you expected? Yeah, yeah, it is, right? 87 meters, uh, 87.0 rather. That looks, that looks kind of right. You can repeat this process for each one of your lengths and you'll get a perimeter. Okay. So once you've got that, I'd love you to work out what your perimeter is and pop it up on the board where I've given you a spot. Okay. How about area? I kind of started walking you through this before, right? I can name these triangles, right? Right hand triangle. Right triangle. I'm going to call that one A, B, C. Right? A, B, C. What's the formula for the area of a triangle? Half, Half. 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 Base, base times, times height. Now, remembering that my height here, even though it's sideways, it has to be this one. Why does it have to be that one? I'm looking at this triangle over here, this big one. The word I'm looking at, it's, it starts with P, right? It's perpendicular, right? It's not just any height, it's the perpendicular height. And this is the only distance I have that's perpendicular to a side. So I'm going to go to this base, which the field diagram tells me, sorry, the measurements tell me, is 131. And then I'm going to go with the perpendicular height, which is 64. So I don't know what 32 times 131 is. Can someone tell me? 5,000. Five. I'm going to beat someone to this one. Got it, well done. Okay? And then you can add it all up. That's just half, yeah? 